able to present you some points that I found and that we found important on operation and maintenance of centralized fecal sludge treatment plants. I think we will also agree on many points with what Gunther presented. Uh, today I would like just to present you some very basic information on fecal sludge treatment and on operation and maintenance in general before coming to precise and, con and practical case of Ouagadougou where a fecal sludge treatment plant is already implemented and in Burkina Faso where two are uh, planned and will be built very soon. I will also go through some differences uh, about operation and maintenance for two different technologies that are unplanted and planted drying beds before finishing with some challenges and conclusions. So as you may know, fecal sludge is about treating the sludge from on-site sanitation systems that are not connected to the sewer. What we absolutely want to avoid is the uncontrolled disposal or reuse in the fields without treatment. So the idea is to concentrate the pollutants and to uh, transport them to treatment plants where they can be processed, treated, and from where we can reuse the biosolids and also the other bio byproducts. Now, why is operation and maintenance so important? As it has already been said, uh, there is a lot of investment in sanitation, Many of these investments are done for infrastructures and many of them are also about on-site sanitation systems and on-site sanitation infrastructures. But these infrastructure produce a mass of fecal sludge that need to be handled and treated correctly to uh, finish the sanitation chain properly. So some fecal sludge treatment were built and some wastewater treatment plants were built also under the MDGs program, but many of them failed, especially in Africa. And why is that so? Um, that's the question. Why are, fa why, why are we fa facing so much failure? The reason is very often operation and maintenance, but what is behind that? We have to think about what is operation and maintenance? Why is that failing? And we have also have to define what is a success. Is that only when we finish the construction that we, have su we are successful? Is that when we can reach uh, financial viability? Is that when we afford to have a good operation and maintenance pla planning? So these are open question questions. What I would like to stress on is that OMM needs to be uh, considered very early in the project, before the technical and for the technical choice and also during the design. Operation and maintenance procedure need to be adapted to the context. We cannot just build a fecal surgery plan and think that as it was done in Dakar, we can do that in Ouagadougou. It's not the case, the context is different, the climate is different, is different. people also are different. And it's also a dynamic <coughs> process about optimization, which can be continuous. So there are four main components of operation and maintenance that I would to go through. Management, of course, we have human resource. The point is also to choose how many people will be put on a fixed surgery plan. This is one point. The other one is the training, the skills that they have. And very often, utilities don't have the means to train them properly. This was also addressed this morning, but it's something important. Administrative procedures are also important. We need flexible procedures, as operation is something that is changing given the condition, given the production of fecal sludge. So we, can, we cannot have rigid uh, administrative procedures. And the financial mechanisms also are very important. Uh, technically, preventive and curative maintenance need to be planned. Uh, curative maintenance is never sufficient. We always need to, uh, to be active before something breaks. Um, the tools and supply also need to be considered. 
And this can also be considered very early in the, pro in the project planning, uh, so that if we implement a new fecal sludge treatment plan, we already know how many and which type of tools and supply we need, and also fuel and electricity consumption. Of course, operation and maintenance also involve monitoring. Uh, this is really a tool to improve the performances of the operation. So it's also about monitoring the performances through laboratories, analysis, but not only, it's also about monitoring operation and maintenance. And the fourth point is communication and capitalization. It's no use to have good um, uh, planning and good monitoring data if it's not communicated. And this needs to happen both vertically inside of the structure, but also horizontally between different, for example, di different companies managing fixed surgical plants. These are general points about operation and maintenance, but which are very important also for fecal such treatment plants. So now coming to the practical case of Dakar, there we have a treatment plant at Camberen, um, which is composed by a screening grid, a settling thickening tank, and a drying bed. This is for the sludge part, and the liquid fraction is um, collected and transported to the nearby wastewater treatment plant. So what do we need, practically, to operate only these three, I would say, small uh, technologies that are screening grid, settling thickening tanks, and drying beds? These are simple to operate technologies, but still they need to be operated and maintained correctly. So we need space, we need security, security equipment, security procedures, human resources, I discussed that, mechanized mean, electricity, consumables, and we need to manage both the truck reception, the screening, the scum and sludge extraction from the settling thickening tanks, the fecal sludge lo load needs to be assessed and defined, which is the good fecal sludge load that we can fill on the drying bed, to which frequency and when do we have to remove the sludge, what we do, what do we do with the removed and dried sludge. These are all questions about operation. And we, if we don't go through this question, we cannot say we have an operating <coughs> treatment. So as you see, these are very simple technologies, but here we have uh, the setting thickening tank, which work with mechanized means. And in Wagadougou, uh, after some difficulties that the owners found with uh, operating this setting thickening tanks, the decision was to operate the future uh, treatment plant without these tanks. So what will, how will it be operated? The trucks will be directly conducted to the drying bed. There will be 96 dry, drying beds. So we have another challenge. We don't have any more to remove the sludge, the scum from the settling thickening tank, but we have to move the trucks inside the, the treatment plant. And this is another challenge. Uh, the, the truck will directly discharge the fecal sludge on screening grids that are, as you, as you can see, at the, at the right hand side, and then uh, the sludge will be distributed on one or, or the other uh, drying bed. And then we, can, we have a storage area in the middle of the fecal sludge treatment plant. Uh, in white, it's the open sky storage area. And in yellow, it's the cover storage area where we can manage the, the, the dried biosolids also during the wet season. And the idea is that we can reuse uh, the dried biosolids so that we can also kind of close the financial loop and come to a better viability. A potential question is to upgrade the, the present design with a uh, planted drying bed. So what would that involve? Um, as you know, planted and unplanted drying beds are very uh, nearby uh, similar technologies. It's true that unplanted drying beds are maybe 
slightly more convenient for wet climate, whereas planted drying beds are more convenient for wet cli climate. But both are simple in operation. They both, both function with uh, filter media, but there are differences in terms of operation. For example, where we have unplanted drying bed, we need to take care of the compact, uh, not to compact the filter media, especially when removing the dried biosolids from the drying bed. And for the planted drying bed, we don't have problem of compaction, but the challenge is more to manage the plant, to take care of them. First of them, we need to acclimatize them on the drying bed and so that they can really treat and get uh, used to the, to the fecal sludge characterization. So as you see, it's not much about the choice uh, or not much about seeing what is the best technology. It's much about thinking about operation maintenance way before uh, building the fecal sludge implant. Uh, here are some potential tools to assist operation and maintenance, also for fecal sludge. It's inspired by, um, by a project that we have presently with ONEA, the of, uh, National of Office for Water and Sanitation. Uh, this was done for wastewater treatment plant, but we can also adapt that for fecal sludge treatment plant. So first of all, a very important thing is to assess the present or the potential operation and maintenance, what are the maintenance planning, what are the equipment and consumables that are needed, how do they work, where can we find them, how quick are they available, this is a very crucial question, that's nearly the last slide. Um, coming back to what Gunther said, it's really a challenge to get the acknowledgement of the importance of operation and maintenance. And this is valid for all technologies, also for very simple to operate and robust technologies, and this is also valid for uh, all decisional levels. It's not only about teaching the operating staff that operation is important but much more about uh, coming to make, to understand the administrative people or people that are managing the, the structures that operation and maintenance is important. Of course, strong ownership and accountability are helping the operation and maintenance. And as I said again and again, uh, it's important to integrate this Component, this operation and maintenance early in the planning. Um, an important challenge is uh, finding financial mechanisms. As you know, it's very easy to find, or sometimes easy to find funds for infrastructures, but then how do we fund the operation and maintenance? And there are several solutions, a uh, very good solution that was also discussed many times is trying to reuse, to valorize the byproducts and use the, the income for the operation and maintenance. Otherwise, it's very hard to find money for that. Um, operation and maintenance is not a fixed thing. It, can, it has to be adapted to different contexts. Therefore, it deserves research. It deserves continuous uh, optimization. For example, a fecal sludge treatment plant can one day in Wakadugu recycle maybe 100 cubic meters per day, mm -hmm. and during the wet season it would more it would recycle something like 500 to 1,000 cubic meters per day. So how do we adapt the operation of such um, fecal sludge treatment plant? And the last point about the challenges in, is the integration into the curricula. It was said also this morning, but we have many information and formal training about how to design the, the infrastructures, but then there is very low information on how to operate it. Uh, finally, I will not come again, but operation and maintenance is crucial to the sustainability. It needs clear role definition, skilled institution, be they public or private, be they involved in direct or delegate operation, 
the, the management needs to be needs to be flexible and dynamic, and the financial mechanism needs also to be defined. Um, and concerning especially the case of fecal sludge, I would say that it's important when we have a treatment plant to think about the whole system because we are dependent on what the what type of fecal sludge and the quantity that is produced at the household level. So we cannot just be the fecal sludge without knowing how much sludge we have and what is the what are the characteristics for of this fecal sludge. And then the collection and transport operation operator are of course very important. They are the inputs of the fecal sludge implant. So it's really about having a more holistic point of view. And the final <coughs> thought is that real success of sustainable sanitation depends on continuous operation and maintenance of treatment and fecal search treatment, treatment infrastructure. As we know that wastewater treatment plants and sewer network are not sufficient, presently at least, to give access to the whole population to sanitation. So we have to consider also fecal sludge management. And if we consider fecal sludge management, we have to consider treatment plant and then operation and maintenance of these treatment plants. If, yeah, thank you for that.